GitHub Actions makes it really easy to do continuous integration builds for your projects hosted on GitHub. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to introduce GitHub Actions. All right, this is something I've been playing around with uh, for a little bit on some other projects. And what I'm going to do today is just walk us through adding a very simple CI build that continuous integration build that does that builds a .NET project and then runs some tests. So I can, have here. Can I ask really quickly um, yeah. because I know I know I'm late to the game here and I haven't been following it because I've been eyeballs deep on other projects. But um, just a quick overview. Uh, why do I want to look at GitHub Actions? I've got things in in um, you know uh, build services in in um, the in Azure, and I've got Stepwin in in AWS. So this is just another similar piece to those types of things, or is there another purpose here? Yeah, it would be similar. Go, go to... back. I, you have stuff building in AWS, like <laughs> using Truthbill. I do, yeah. Did they give you a trophy oh, for getting that working? You're the guy, I guess, huh? <laughs> no, actually, I just inherited that on the project I'm working on, so I can't even take credit for it. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. I just derailed that. Yeah, very similar to pipelines in Azure DevOps, or some, uh, we've done some videos before on using AppVayer, or you might be familiar with Travis CI. These are all very similar offerings. Uh, the nice thing about GitHub Actions is that it's integrated right into GitHub. It's part of the, the product offering. There's a pretty healthy free tier there for you. Um, so it's a pretty good way to, to pull things in without having to um, re rely on a third party, I suppose. Sometimes it's nice just having everything in one place. But um, not necessarily better than those other offerings. Uh, there might be some features that are not quite there yet with GitHub Actions. You might choose to stick with existing features, but if you have a brand new project and it's pretty straightforward, definitely worth taking a look at. Right on. Thank you. Okay, right, so to get started with GitHub Actions here, I have this project that's just a, it's a .NET Core app. It has a few projects in it and a test project that has some tests, or in this case, a single test. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty straightforward. I click on the Actions tab here in GitHub. And it seems to recognize that I have .NET in here. So it says, uh, build and test your C-sharp repository and set up this workflow. So it gives me a very basic workflow file here called .NET Core.yaml. Your GitHub Actions definitions are YAML files uh, that go in a .github slash workflows folder. You can have many of these. So I'm just going to call this one ci.yaml. And I'll rename it as continuous integration. And a few things that you define in here. So one is the trigger of when you want this thing to run. What they've defaulted this is to anytime something is pushed to any branch. I actually want to be a little bit more specific about that. So I'm going to say uh, on push. This editor that's built in here is actually pretty clever in terms of having autocomplete for you. So if I do control space anywhere, anytime I'm typing in here, it autocompletes with a bunch of really good options for me. That's yeah, so what I want to do is uh, any push to master. Uh, no, nope, sorry, branches. It even suggested that for me, and I ignored it. So let's start over. Branches, and I want it on master. Now, if I go back down a level, something else that I want it to trigger on is pull requests. So any pull requests to the master branch, I also want to build this, run this build. OK, so that's the triggers. And then there's the actual jobs that run. So here, I'm going to have a job called build. And I want it to, you tell it what, uh, what kind of, what do we call this? Uh, build agent? Yeah, build agent to run on. Thank you, Simon. Uh, defaults to Ubuntu latest. Uh, the other project I was doing Windows, but actually in this case, there's really no reason for me to, to do that. So uh, I am going to do Ubuntu latest. And it recognized here that I have an invalid value and gave me some suggestions. So that's pretty handy. A little click on the finish one up at the top there. Did you mean Ubuntu latest? Yeah, that is the one I meant to. Nice. Type in, and that's what it said originally. And then there's the steps. So the steps, uh, first thing it does is uh, uses this. Uh, checkout action, so let's say checkout my repo, 
uh, and then set up .NET Core. So it actually defaulted to a version of .NET that's not supported currently. Uh, there is end of life. Uh, I want the latest 3.1.101 at the time of recording. Um, and then I want to build. So first step is going to be build. So I say uh, run .NET build. .NET, after having run this setup action, will, ha will be installed on this on this build agent. Uh, the only thing I also need to specify is a working directory here. So I'm going to tell it uh, so the working directory is where my solution file is, which isn't at the root in this particular repo. If I look at the repo here, I actually have it in a folder called, for some reason, that folder. Uh, so I'll tell it that's my working folder, working directory dot slash. And now I want to run another task after that. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a name. So that builds it. I'll find out then if it compiles at least. And then I'm going to do a second one called test, which is just going to run dot net test from the command line. And again, I'll have to give it that same working directory. And that should be it. That's my all I want to do for this particular workflow. So I'm going to commit that directly to master here, which should trigger a, a build. And we'll see if that works. So there's my file now inside of my repo. And if I go over to actions, I don't know if it's actually going to, so one of the funny thing, oh, there it is. One of the things that's missing today with GitHub Actions is that I can't just go and once I create a file, just run that build. It has to be triggered by something. So, so there's uh, no, this, there's no like explicit um, way to actually say start this um, build script. No, so you can rerun an exist uh, or trigger that already happened, but you can't trigger a new one short of whatever has been defined in the workflow as the trigger. Sure. So my build.net action failed here, which is disappointing. No such file or directory. Interesting. .net build configuration release. Okay. Uh, I wonder if maybe you have the correct uh, working directory. That's, I think I do, but no such file or directory here isn't. It's not telling me if it's a solution file I can't find or if it's .NET that I can't find. Yes, that is tricky. Okay, so in terms of then, is there like there you got the three dot uh, thing? Can we pull a console up or no? I guess not. View law rocks. So there, there we go. Okay, so let's see what it tried to do here. Hmm. Not much more detail than no, what there we isn't. Have. Yeah. I am going to try running this on the Windows agent instead, just to see if there's something goofy going on there with... So I know I've tried this with the Windows one. All right, so if I want to go and edit an existing workflow, just come in here and hit edit, and it brings me back to that nice uh, editor here. And I bet you this. that your problem is that working directory. I don't think that dot slash is the right thing, especially that slash on Ubuntu. Yeah, you're probably right. You know what? Let's. I got my slash Windows side, don't I? Yeah, I think so. You think that might work? I don't know. Let's we'll give it a give try. Give it a try. What an adventure we're having. We're mashing. This is like pure, unadulterated mashing right here. Yeah. <laughs> Do I even Linux? <laughs> I once heard a, um, a recording of Linus Torvalds saying, my name is Linus Torvalds, and I pronounce Linux Linux, because people were calling it Linux, right? Because, right. Yeah. 
trying to make it sound like his name. And this looks different. Looks like there's a little bit more Guys. You know, that core stuff. Hey, hey. Good call, Simon. You always come to my rescue when it comes to me goofing up Linux things. <laughs> he also comes to your rescue if you try to use the accidentally use the filter feature in the console of Chrome. <laughs> oh, we, we, right. gotta tell, we gotta tell that story now, because. It's ridiculous. We'll leave it till the end, though. Okay. Sure. So we have our, our test run here. Yes. We have our one test oh, that passed. And what I last thing I wanted to show, I mean, this is working. Any check into or push to master will, will run for us. But what I did want to do is uh, just simulate a pull request here that breaks a test. And then we can kind of see, see what that looks like. So I'm going to go into here and change this telemetry initializer. I know this is the thing that it's testing, so I'm going to edit this file. And I'm going to say just append oops to the end of that. And I'm going to commit this as a new branch. Now we expect this not at this point, the action should not be triggered. Uh, trigger, creating the pull request should trigger the action. Sure. Should, I, yes. Yeah. yeah, I meant creating the branch because we had you'd limit it to off of master or pull request to master. So this branch in and of itself won't try and build. Correct. It's the pull request that. So that also created a pull request here with that branch I created, uh, and you can see here that it is in progress already, and we should see it fail. We are hoping for a failure. Unlike our friends at Boeing trying to get that. <laughs> Ooh, too topical. That's it. Okay. Hey, there we go. I like that. Okay, so we can go look at that and. That's excellent. Fancy what, is, what is session library using for that? Is that just XUnit? That's just XUnit, yeah. Oh, cool. Standard XUnit stuff. So I believe there's also some like, capturing the output of the unit tests that can be formatted a little better. Uh, yeah. But I mean, at least this shows us what's happening. So that's a good step one. So I'm going to go in here and say no to this pull request because it clearly breaks things. And that's it. That's uh, that's getting set up with at least doing a, a build and a test for your .NET apps. Uh, we'll follow this up shortly with some videos on how to do uh, publishing out to say an app service if you have a website that you're building, or publishing out to NuGet if you're building packages. Awesome. Now I really wish for this part, this segment, that we had some nice background music playing and we could do a transition to a sidebar thing. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going I'm to tell my side of the story, and then I'm going to throw it over to, to Simon here. But I, I diligently, as, as best I could, went through all the steps, verified the library was loading, make, made sure I wasn't getting any errors with the script. I had added a new feature to a page, and I had done so by adding a local version of uh, – or no, actually, I was – playing off of a, what was globally available in, inside the resources on the page already with um, um, uh, the Vue.js, because there's we had Vue.js, and it's inside of a an, part of an application that's in uh, Razor Pages and et cetera, et cetera. And it was part of a Vue component, and I'm adding functionality to this Vue component. I'm like, Vue would be perfect for this. So I go in, and I add a couple of console log statements just to make sure that the app is mounting correctly. And then I proceeded to spend about 45 minutes on this because I can't get the thing to mount, and I can't get anything. I, I'm just trying to add an event handler for a button click, and I add console.log, button click, away we go, nothing. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's no errors in the console. There's no problems. So I called in the big guns, and <laughs> brought Simon in. So we started to take a look at this thing, and yeah, indeed, there's nothing being logged to the console. I'm like, this is super weird. We hooked in a bunch more uh, lifecycle handlers, like hooking into created, because that, like, that for sure should be executed. Nothing on a console. 
So like this is crazy. Let's put some breakpoints in there. So we put breakpoints in, reload the page, breakpoints get hit. It on hits the console. all the breakpoints. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and we're like, what is happening here? Like we're, we're hitting this bit, we're doing console.log and nothing is coming up. Okay, we must be clobbering console somewhere. Like we must have some sort of a unit test or something that's accidentally getting included that is clobbering console. So I searched through the code, nothing related to that. And then we just like, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do here. And James notices that inside the little filter box on the console in Chrome, we had something written. So all the log messages were just being filtered out. Everything was working fine, but we just filtered it. So this is like an hour of our time. And this is how expert we are at doing things. I was actually just preparing um, a small sacrifice to burn. Um, <laughs> and didn't quite need it. Could you, did you have a console window you could pull up there? Um, you bet. I think you're typing some stuff in there. It's beautiful. Okay, so uh, there we go. Now, if you just go type in PT in there, in that filter box, do you notice how everything disappears? So when you're on a very big monitor and, <laughs> um, yeah, and that's just a very small amount of text to notice. And the be from best what I can figure is that I was typing in some command somewhere and window focus changed and I mm -hmm. accidentally ended up in the text box because I did not until yesterday know that that box even exists there. I've never <laughs> tried to filter anything out on the console. So, yeah. Hashtag experts. That's awesome. Lessons learned. Such a great story. <laughs> and while James was telling that story, I remembered one thing that I wanted to add to this uh, is a badge. So we can actually come in here and there's a, a badge API for these builds. So you just specify the, the URL for your GitHub repo and then slash workflows and the name of your workflow slash badge.svg. And that will give you a, a pretty badge showing the current status of your build. So if I save this, I'll commit that straight to master. I mean, that enough. There you go. Is give me a segregation that's, passing. That's enough to use actions right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, remember to like, comment, share, and if you find that your comments are not making it through, check that filter dialog box. We'll see everybody <laughs> next week. Bye. Cheers, everyone.